So I suppose my advice to anybody looking to go to college to study audio engineering. Hi everyone, welcome to the studio. It's Martin from Mayor Street Records. I hope you're keeping well. Now, in today's video, I've literally just come into the studio this evening just to talk about this particular subject because as ever, it's something that happens quite a bit with me and I've, uh, I don't know, I find it a little bit of an interesting one, mostly because I recall doing the same thing myself a few, well, maybe a couple of decades ago. I'm not going to age myself too much there. <laughs> um, and what I'm talking about is deciding whether I want to go to college to study audio engineering or asking other recording studios can I please, please get some work experience in your lovely fine place? And uh, yeah, getting the answers, which were always pretty much uh, nah. So let's talk about that. So as you know, I do run a small studio. Um, no way do I have a massive, large scale live room, nothing like that. When I have bigger projects, I take them away. I find locations to do that. But between me and you, I am putting together a small sort of room extension, if you like, to my home, uh, which I would like to eventually possibly maybe use as a drum room and some bigger live stuff in-house. Um, but that's obviously something completely different. But in today's video, like I say, maybe you can think about it yourselves. The time you got into recording music and you thought to yourself... Right, okay, I've got some gear, I bought, you know, whatever the mixer was, um, suddenly there were interfaces or maybe you were just recording directly onto a, uh, a HD recorder. Um, I know Mackie did some back in the day, the SDRs and the MDRs, which I had, and I still do to this day. In fact, there's one right in front of me, <laughs> uh, which I use for live stuff occasionally because it's got 24 tracks all dedicated and it's just, I don't know, it's just something I know and I can transfer those files. But anyway... And you've kind of taught yourself and everything's going really nicely and you get to a point when you think, well, okay, I need to start reaching out to people because in theory, that's really what you have to do in this game. There's no such thing as a walk-in job that you will suddenly just sit down at your desk and there'll be lots of things in your in-tray because that's what the job gives you. Yes, I'm sure there have been cases and I'm sure there are literally you can count them on your hands of people being walked in the door at massive recording studios and being earned that apprenticeship but the reality is that really does not happen and if anyone says it does happen I'd love to hear the story because it's fascinating and I'd love to know what the journey was um, and how you got there without really paying someone knowing someone in the first place or knowing someone who knew someone um because it's amazing if that does happen, you know. Um, and I do recall um, calling studios initially and uh, going through my local directory because at the time internet wasn't as big as such and maybe they didn't have websites. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm calling up people and instantly I thought, this is just a one-man band. There's just one person in this studio. They don't want to know about please, can I come and work for you? They're just, they just want to work for themselves and make money possibly and just, you know, make a living. Um, and I would call people up. I was around 18, 19 at the time and just said, yeah, looking to do work experience. I'll do anything to sort of work in the studio. Can you help me? And it was always, sorry, we haven't got any of that. Um, I get that today. You know, that's why I um, have wanted to talk about this. I get an email at least maybe twice, three times a month um, from local people um, saying that they're thinking about going to college and they want to be an engineer and they want to work as a producer possibly and wondering if they could work in my studio and help me in some way or just do work experience. And man, it's just, you know, it just feels like full circle. Do you know what I mean? It just feels like, oh my God, that's me. That's what I did. I called these people 
And I'm now that person, you know, and in a way I am a freelance engineer, but working in my own studio. Um, I do my own stuff in here. I produce for other people. I master tracks. I mix tracks. I write songs, compositions for stuff and audio books, as you know. Um, And I always want to tell the person at the other end of the line, apart from my usual polite, sorry, I haven't got that kind of set up here. I just want to say to him, God, that's what I did, (laughs) you know, and man, you're just doing exactly what I've done. And, you know, I know how you're feeling and it's a bit crap and my God. Um, But I don't do that. Instead, what I do is just politely decline and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And that's the truth. You know, I haven't got the capacity. And when I do bigger jobs, I normally would hire people that I know that come along with me and help me either road crew or quite simply set up and I'll engineer the gig. Um, So I suppose where I'm going with this is that There's nothing wrong with full circle and you have to ask, but I wish I could personally be a bit more direct and give the advice. Um, When it comes to things like, you know, I hear people saying, oh, they're going to be going to university to study audio engineering and they're going to different places. And so they want to get some work experience beforehand. Um, I kind of want to shake them a little as well and to say... I was that happy person. I was that excited, you know, yeah, going to college, I'm going to study engineering, I'm going to go and work at Abbey Road and it's going to be amazing and I'll meet the next whoever, you two or Oasis or something and I'll work with them. But that isn't reality, is it? So I suppose my advice to anybody looking to go to college to study audio engineering, 100% do it. There's no... Nothing wrong with doing it. I'm not a pessimist to education at all. I just believe when you are there, and this is what I would have told myself when I did my own audio um, sort of training, if you like, up in Liverpool, um, is ask questions. Don't feel like you have to go into this institute or this academy and feel like you know it all, you know, that you've you've mixed a million songs of your own or something or someone else's and you, you know it. Just be a novice because that is, in a way, is how you should always remain. I don't believe anyone, even if you know it, you, your ears are more trained to mix or master or produce, you have to go in with a bit of as a humble person you know um and curiosity is really what it's about you we are our own researchers in this game and um if anyone ever goes into these colleges or academies and feels like they have to know everything um then you're in trouble i mean when i i'll give you an example when i was in college I recall doing this lovely production course, working on some amazing desks and studios and we could hire the, well, use the space. Uh, it was all part of the course, you know, out of lessons, you could hire it and uh, and use the facility. Um, but however, when I left the course and I started working, I started to work in live audio first, I realised, you know what, I didn't really pay much attention to what was going on behind the boards, you know, behind amps, um, plugging stuff up, you know, different cables, possibly apart from the usual. Um, and that bothered me because I thought to myself, man, I didn't, I didn't really understand the concept of amplifiers. And in a studio, sometimes you don't need to worry about that. Let's be honest. Once it's set up, you're in a different role but that's my example but um I remember feeling like I should have asked more questions when that teacher was talking about you know he'd worked on particular blur songs and what have you and he'd done this and this and the other I should have said that's really nice but I'm really interested to know about what's behind this amazing studio what's going on so never be afraid to ask questions because that is why you're in an institute or an academy 
a college to learn um, and don't feel you know it all ever. <laughs> That's what I would say to my older self. Um, not saying that I thought I was a know-all, far from it, you know, but maybe I was more shy to ask those particular questions and instead I just wanted to get through the course and get onto the next playing field. What was after college, apart from getting a job in live audio, it wasn't that whole dream about, you know, walking into a huge studio. I remained a musician and maybe you did something similar and I built a studio and in theory, what I did was create a job for myself. Um, yeah, I was working, like I say, and I've done some freelance as well. Um, but ultimately, this last decade has been about me in the studio, me working on video projects as well as audio projects of all kind of genres, really. Um, and, you know... Would it have been great to have met someone along the way? Because I'm sure that's really how that happens. If you look at particular bands, read their their archive of stories and how they met producers or why they work with certain ones, especially the indie bands of the 90s, you know, um, or even before that, you know, um, you'll probably find most people involved kind of knew each other anyway. And it was a bit of a club. And so I... I take that not to beat myself up. I take that as a as an understanding that sometimes the things are just not meant to be and that's not a bad thing. It's completely fine, you know. As long as you're not doing a job that you completely detest and you just wish you didn't have to, um then I suppose you're you're winning <laughs> because ultimately you want to do an audio engineering course to remain doing audio, not just as a hobby, but also to pay your bills and to go on your holidays and just save your money for the future, or whatever you want to do with it, um, if you see what I'm saying. So I hope this video... <laughs> rant has given you has given you a bit of a understanding uh, about my feelings and thoughts about asking for work experience and going full circle and going to college. Um, I didn't really have any construct for this film. For me, it really is just for anyone out there who is at the phase of wanting to reach out to get work experience, wanting to go to college eventually, and maybe the person who is similar to me 20 years later from the college days, looking back now and realising, man, it has gone full circle and people are now calling yourself, me in this case as well, for that experience, for some advice, for a bit of a, a walk in the, the local door, if anything. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just fascinating, really. But anyway, I'll leave it there. And by all means, if you've got a story to share, please, please, please leave a comment. And I hope this video has given you something, if anything, just to think about for the last whatever minutes it's been. <laughs> anyway, keep well and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.